May I extend my fraternal greetings to the Convention from Scotland. Welcome back everyone to this session from Europe and Africa. Our speakers each address ways in which we may gain freedom from our Maya-propelled transient world by attaining the pinnacle of human consciousness. I'm delighted to introduce the three speakers of this session. Our first speaker is Tran T. Kim Ju. Kim Ju has been a member of the Theosophical Society in France since 1972. She is a postgraduate in pharmaceutical technology. Kim Ju is chairperson of the European Federation of the TS and vice president of the TS in France. Her main concern is to encourage cooperation and to promulgate the teachings as well as to share experience in service of the TS. Kim Ju promotes a new way of living where each human life can be guided by universal ethics in the mystic dimension of consciousness. The title of her talk is Moving with the Timeless. Greetings to all. I wish to all participants an inspiring convention. Humans as we are, we are all prisoners of time. The hectic daily occupations, whether they are actual in our life or they only concern others, play an accelerator's role in the movement of our thoughts. One easily lets oneself draw in this world of agitations so that at times one can lose one's footing and lose direction of one's life. The feeling of being imprisoned can be sensed according to the moment, meaning according to the daily process of our activities. This prison, though not formed of iron bars or of magnetic walls or of laser fences, holds tight those who are jailed. In the development of events, one may ask, what is a human? What is time? How is it that humans have been trapped in this invisible prison? And eventually, how to get out of the circle of incarceration. According to the theosophical teaching, a human being with its complex components, which are not to be developed and analyzed here, so a human is consciousness. All the visible aspects of a human being express this consciousness. In the particular way, consciousness expresses itself by emotions, feelings and thoughts. Generally, the mind manifests itself through thoughts. And most of the time, the mind is full of thoughts, images, ideas, and each of these may be still or in movement. The movement of thought produces the notion of time. This does not mean that when the mind is captured in an immobile picture, there is no time, because it is undeniable that whether thoughts are in movement or are frozen as a snapshots, time is always there. All the components of a human being from the level of pure consciousness densify themselves down to the level of the physical body, transiting through what the second generation of writers, theosophical writers, call bodies or vehicles. Levels differ by densification from high to low and vice versa, from low to high through refinement. The human complex lives and keeps a dynamic profile 
in the constant transfer between levels conducted by the densification or refinement of the constitutive substances. Although one can read so many times the quotation from the QT cited in the Mahatma letters, I quote, matter is the crystallization of spirit and spirit is the sublimation of matter. Although one can read it many times, one does not realize that this statement applies to the whole universe, including humans, and does not only serve as a theoretical, metaphysical speculation for occasional students. A human being, as consciousness, acts like a microcosm of the dynamics of the universe. In other words, a human being forms a dynamic unit of the universe acting in concert with the universe. Consciousness is always moving, so much so that, as said a humorist, you cannot tell your age at any moment since it is changing in the meantime. The movement implies the whole universe, but at the level of the gross matter, like the physical body, the emotions, the feelings, the movement escapes observation. Even more at the level of thought, yet by attentive observation, all thoughts reveal its whole movement, and the movement of thought induces the senses of time. Consequently, not seeing the movement of this thought implies one unknowingly stays in the domain of thought, imprisoned in its movement. It goes over and over until the, the, the ultimate breakthrough. It is as simple as to get out of a prison, the prisoners must see the prison. Otherwise, unconsciously, they might gladly continue to improve the conditions of their jail. They can feel satisfied with the situation of being prisoners. One may understand that necessity, one can understand the necessity of cyclical crisis. This sounds a bit cynical, yet none can deny that consciousness in the lower part of its embodiments needs to be shaken to wake up and come near to re the reality. One may take this in a lighter way in comparing these crises with baby teaching teething, a natural way to grow up. But let us get back to the matter of time, our great prison. Readings and studies can give some knowledge about time. Time categories itself into two types, chronological and psychological. Chronological, ti chronological time on the earth level derives from conventional agreement. It is different from, on March or on Jupiter. On the cosmic level, time is bound to space and thus becomes a theoretical speculation all dependent upon space. On both levels, time depends upon surrounding factors. Indeed, travelers get the impression of being still when, they, when their vehicle moves at the same velocity as the one of the decor, be it a moving wall or another transportation vehicle. Time, being produced by movement, abolishes itself when experiences find themselves in the continuum moving at the same velocity as the surrounding. Psychological time is entirely subjective. One hour 
on the watch for one person may last twice for another. This observation, repeated, repetitively related by experiences, has turned out to be popular myths, like the one of the sleeping hollow, hollow or the legend of the white waters. In both stories, the fallen in sleep experiencer wakes up after a longer duration of factual chronological time. In human life, daily life, one can live the experience in a quite trivial manner. Indeed, when one must do something necessary but unpleasant, one tries to do it as quickly as possible to get rid of it, but feels the task long-lasting. On the contrary, living a pleasant experience, one yearns to make it last longer, but finds it quite evanescent. In short, time on the psychological level amounts to a fleeting illusion. The illusion is the prison. If one is unaware of the events occurring inwardly, one has lost one's footing in the stream of life, and the merry-go-round will continue. From the primitive consciousness of the earlier kingdoms, humans gained the evolved level of self-consciousness, imparting the ability of seeing itself from the inside. The seeing that one is in prison testifies to the ability, this ability of seeing oneself from the inside and the endeavor of getting out of the prison gives evidence to the living evolutive dynamic of dynamics of the universe in the human consciousness. The vital factor in the endeavor lies in attentiveness. In the incessant stream of evanescence events, if consciousness keeps attentiveness, it illumines their meaning as well as their process, and thus may lead the observer to a greater realization. One comes to see that time is not continuous. The constant stream of thought leads to the common presumption that time flows uninterruptedly, but thought look like beads in an unending necklace, gathered by the threat of volition. This imposes on the entire process an appearance of continuity. Seeing the discontinuity of time is breaking through boundary of the prison of thought, hence the prison of time. Living with the timeless is moving with the movement of consciousness which exists since the beginning of time. The great paradox here is that consciousness is Consciousness in this movement does not have an identity. There is just consciousness as one single movement living, developing itself without self-identification. Whilst in any experience, there are the experience as a thing to be experienced, the experiencer as the actor, and the experiencing as the action. There is no division here, no one seeing, no observer. Since here consciousness is alone, without any second entity, one can say that there cannot be any experience of the timeless. The experiencer disappeared. There cannot be any experience, any experiencing. Yet the discursive mind may dispute that manifestation 
begins with time. So how can one reconciliate moving with the timeless and manifestation beginning with time? Here the mind must be quiet and, and focused. Consciousness is everywhere. Calling levels of consciousness is just a way of saying there is consciousness for physical survival. Consciousness is feelings, emotions. Consciousness is mind and consciousness is intelligence and compassion known as Bodhi. Consciousness as universal intelligence known as Mahat. Consciousness as the germ of the next manifested world, the next Mavantara. When asked what stays when everything will disappear, Plato answered, goodness. As were Buddhist writings mention, Alaya Viknana, which is understood to be the deepest level of consciousness that is knowable. The same Buddhist writings also mention Karuna. Karuna, compassion, as the foundation of the universe. Then what is felt intuitively seems reasonable. That is the equivalence of the three concepts. Karuna, Alaya Viknana and goodness. Utterly living, consciousness is always there, from grossest, the lowest, to finest, highest. Consciousness is present, just because it is one, undivided, unbound to time. The present stands for the immaterial link of past and future on the horizontal line. Sometimes one may read, read an expression such as the eternal present, but this is a linguistic abuse because being always in motion, the present cannot last, but it is just a transiting point between what has irremediably occurred and what would is still to happen. The present is part of time. It, it can be eonic, lasting for eons, but not eternal. The now is not part of time. It is space as such, which has no beginning, no end. Thus, now the timeless has nothing to compare with the present. It is the oneness of space, which was will be and is forever. So moving with the timeless means living on the deepest or highest level of consciousness, meaning also with goodness and compassion, without naming, because there is no longer self-identification, self-consciousness, but living according to the natural order of the universe or Rita, from which derives later on ethics. At this state, no one is there to self-identify as somebody ethical. It is a natural motion inside the movement of consciousness. The consciousness one. This state illustrates the description in the Upanishads which Jiddu Krishnamurti used for himself when he was asked how one can know that one no longer lives in the prison of time. And his answer is short, concise, as in the Upanishad, water cannot know the taste of water. At the end of my sharing, a challenging question may pop up. Who is the witness of all this? Who is the witness of what is happening? 
The answer is consciousness itself, or still the silent watcher, which is just a way of saying for awareness, which is universal intelligence in action. Thank you, Kim Ju, for a thoroughly researched, most erudite and inspiring presentation. Kim Ju has given us insight into how we may avoid distraction by the phantom apparitions cast on the wall of Plato's symbolic cave, so that we may remove the shackles of our minds and tread upwards towards the metaphorical sunlight of Samadhi.